Here on Yeti at Large recently, we refurbished one of the cargo compartment doors on our 1959 Shasta Air Flight trailer. It did not need a full rebuild. However, the passenger side door does. So this next episode will just focus on the differences between the two. For more information, refer to our first episode. Let's go! As we rebuild the passenger side door, there's a lot of specifics that we're not going to focus on. To get a full picture of what the entire cargo compartment door rebuild was like, refer to our other episode, the thumbnails here on the screen. I'll tell you, a lot of people will say back in the good old days, things were built better. I don't believe that's necessarily true, but there was a certain genius with the frugality and efficiencies that they captured. For example, once I tore down the entire door, it appears to me that the wood in this door is made from the pallets that were probably used to ship parts and materials to the factory. I think that's pretty clever. They only had four staples holding these butt joints together, and maybe that's because each additional layer, the Luan siding and the aluminum, added structural values. Well, we're going to do some one by twos. We're going to 45 the corners, we're going to set some screws and wood glue to try and get a little more structural integrity in this. You can see here I'm trying to get the perfect size pilot hole. I'm looking for a drill bit that's the same diameter as the shank of the screw, which allows the threads to bite into the wood without splitting it. Love my little drill press here. Got it at a garage sale for next to nothing. As we go through this, just realize that the measurements aren't necessarily laser beam accurate. I'm accepting the fact that there are issues where the door frame may not be perfectly square, plumb, or true, and so I'm doing my best to copy the old door so that I'm building in some of the flaws that may be there that might help it seal a little bit better as opposed to a perfect door in an imperfect opening. You can see here I'm eyeballing some of this, but I think we're going to be okay. It's the effort that counts when you're trying to plan ahead for this kind of an execution on engineering. Now that we have our wood frame basically laid out, we're going to glue and use those deck screws to bring it together. I'll make an effort to ensure that I'm somewhat close to square, uh, just knowing that I want this to fit to the aluminum siding that I'm going to recycle. Again, I'm using a hand driver on this and not a power driver because it'd be very easy to over torque those screws and not get a good uh, seal on the two. Once we get the frame all together, we'll measure it against our uh, aluminum siding that's basically our template, and then we'll cut out our Luan. I got a piece of Luan from the store for about a million dollars, and of course it's a couple inches too narrow to be efficient with how I cut it, so we're gonna have a lot of waste, scrap, and trim. A little safety tip here when you set up your skill saw, you only want the blade depth enough so that the tooth clears the product you're cutting. Plus it always helps to have a spotter working around you to avoid you running over cords, tables, clamps, or yourself. I'm testing my nail gun here to make sure the brads that I'm using to secure this don't punch clean through or come up shy. I'm only going to use the bare minimum amount of fasteners to get it to get a good bond to the glue. However, on the aluminum side, I'm going to use the high bond, two-sided, thick tape. This will serve a couple of purposes. One, it'll give me a little bit of clearance for compression when the door closes and other type things. And two, it should provide some pretty good weather sealant from the elements to keep water out of the inside of the door. I used a little rolling pin there to roll it down before I pulled the backing tape. And I was super careful when I laid it down, because when this stuff grabs, it grabs. And again, I'm just putting down a couple of brads. I've got a really broad head uh, brad in my nailer here to try and help hold it all together while we build on it. All right, so there is the hinge side. Okay. Now, here is the lock side. And Believe it or not, this has been worked on the anvil Interesting. to bring it back to, it was just mangled. I bet, yeah. Um, so we do a little bit of a dry fit, just to see. 
and I like this turn and slide. If you've got a clean eye, you'll see that I'm using a product called Shoe Goo, G-O-O. -O. It's flexible, it's waterproof, and it is forgiving uh, during assembly time. I think it's a good choice of adhesives to get some weather sealant properties in here, but still have something that's going to have a little give. I might have overworked these on the anvil a little bit because mercy, they're tight. They're at 90 degree angles, but uh, I don't think they were really meant to be. So forgive me while I get a little aggressive trying to shimmy and shoehorn this thing back together. Corner details came out quite nice though. And behind that opening in the aluminum, there's quite a bit of that sealant in there. All right, YouTube. We're an OBS channel here. Well, we are some BS. Um, but this is the first time we tried fitting. This is a brand new door. Brand new Luan. All recycled facade for the aluminum and the facing. We put nails back in the original holes and put in a few wood screws just to tighten her all up. We have rubber-based adhesives, high bond double-sided tape and wood glue holding this together. But this is our first dry fit to see how it matches up and if we're even plumb square or true. Are you ready? This is perfect. Now this gap that you're seeing, there's going to be aluminum siding all the way around. It's not in right now and that takes up uh, a quarter on every side. So if I go up, I've got my quarter and I go left to right, I got my quarter. I'm feeling pretty good about this and we've still lined up with the body lines on the trailer. That's a good giveaway there. The old door was just so wonky, nothing against it, um, but it, uh, it wasn't square anymore so it wasn't closing and the rot was so bad. So we've had to rebuild one out of two. We're going to let the adhesive set overnight. We're going to paint this. We'll get the frame put back in here. We'll polish up the eyebrow and uh, we'll get this reinstalled. and get our route out for the door locks and bore through the, the existing hole. See you tomorrow. Junie B! Alright, I skipped a few steps in this door rebuild. This door fits very tight and you can see I was so anxious I didn't let the paint dry all the way. But we have rebuilt the lock mechanism by taking a piece of 16 gauge steel building a custom washer out of it using some Loctite adhesive to secure it and then we've got these new locks in here with this big 7 8 backing nut to hold it on there. Obviously we had to get in there and route that out a little bit so it would fit better. Let's see if we can at least get a little dynamic action. So now I'm going to slow down and let the paint fully dry on this rainy day and we'll reinstall this door. Like I was saying earlier, it's not necessarily square, plumb, or true, but we wanted the door to fit the space. So it required a little encouragement in the form of cutting out a 2x4 to hammer some of the trim that's now installed. She fits snug and we're happy about that. It'll loosen up over time. We installed some adhesive weather stripping around both of the cargo doors and every window that we touch. It's helped out because I feel that it gives us a little forgive it, forgiveness in the space and it's removable if we feel like we need a thicker one I'll put a larger one on. At this point though I've been working on this for several hours outside and the, both of the dogs have become very impatient with me so I'm taking a break to play with the dogs. Junie here's our rescue. We believe in dogs and we believe in rescue dogs. If you have space in your home and your heart for a dog please consider a rescue. That's our rear cargo compartment refurbishment with the doors and the storage area. Bed's all made, everything's functional. It appears to have some decent weather stripping. 
simply because we've had pouring monsoon rain here the last few days and it seems to be dry and watertight. These are pretty solid keys and the latches are long enough that we don't feel like it's going to pop back open on us. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. Share this channel with a friend. We could really use your support.